Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, I've got kind of a plethora of topics here. But I guess what I'm really interested in is if uh, you have any questions for me uh, to fill out the Q&A that is linked down below. So let's dive into the pens. All right, so <laughs> filmed that talky part last night, decided, oh, it's kind of late, I'm going to make no sense. And here I am the next night with a Yeti microphone somehow in camera view, which usually I manage it not to be, but whatever. And it's now 8.30 at night because I was stuck at school doing work till a little past 7. Uh, what, what I was asked to do was kind of at the last minute, I was asked to sell tickets to the junior high football, sorry, not football, basketball game tonight. Which that whole season had been put on hold thanks to the governor's mask mandate. They just stopped all school sports for about a month. And they've been able to restart. So junior high should be done right now. But hey, all four are going. High school, girls and boys basketball, and junior high girls and boys. As well as wrestling. So glad I don't have to try and schedule the gym and the practices and everything. But anyway, so I was asked to sell tickets at this last minute for a game that shouldn't have even been tonight. But it was. Which I'm not criticizing the governor's decision. I think it was the right one. I just, uh, yeah, I was stuck at school till forever and then i gotta come home and do other stuff before i can get around to doing the video so here i am 8 30 and who knows when i'll get to bed but it's friday so and it was payday today too so i'm uh i can stay up and get this done <laughs> so let's take a look at the pens that's what you're here for right so the pens i have from left to right are a central pen 810820 which was actually online to be clean, but when I just did my Central Pen video this week, I discovered, hey, it still has ink in it. Uh, Central Pen Lady, the olive finish, which I'm going to show you isn't writing any better after sitting for a few days. So uh, we will, over this break, I'm going to work with it a little. A Central Pen Lady, which writes beautifully. A Svenstrom Pen from Sweden. Uh, the Pen BBS 388 is back out of hibernation, so we'll see how that's writing. Uh, Caveco Sport. Aurora 88 actually went away for a little bit of a hibernation because I thought, eh, I've been kind of using it a lot lately, so I thought, let's let it hibernate for a while. So we'll see how well it, it held the seal. Waterman Hemisphere. And I got talked into one, by one of my viewers, one of my viewers, so it's one of you, Talked me into buying a new Aurora Duo cart. I, you know, I saw this finish when it came out and I was like, why didn't I wait to buy my Aurora Duo cart? Because yes, I got the advantage of the vintage packaging with the one I bought, but I like this finish so much better. So, and guess what I'm going to use? I'm not going to use the vintage packaging ever again, but I am going to use the pen. So, really? Except I didn't know this finish was coming, so, you know, I don't feel too bad about it. But anyway, those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. So, let's see how they write. So, I did end up missing you all last week. I, no excuse for it, I was just busy and uh, didn't plan my time well. And then I had a busy weekend, so just nothing got done. But anywho, uh, my first pen is this Central Pen 100820. Just love the finish on it. And more importantly, this one has an amazing nib. I have another central pen, which I need to dig out. Maybe now that this one's empty, I'll dig it out for another week. That has the same nib on it that is plain black and looks like, like nothing, but writes just as well. So I don't know. Oh, actually, I could just look, couldn't I? Because I've got my pens and use journal. So I could look back a week or two or three. How long did it sit there? Oh, okay. So I know what ink is in it now. So this is a Centro pen. Just show you the nib real quick. Isco. 
14 karat gold from Czechoslovakia. And the ink in it is Roshizuku Yu Yake Yu Yake. Which I think is a very attractive orange. You know, I used to be kind of partial to Apache Sunset, but uh, you know, I've discovered some other oranges that I like as well or better. Plus, uh, I kind of got tired of how Apache Sunset would uh, really struggle to dry, especially after it was in the pen for a while and on certain specific papers. So, very nice ink, although there's no way you're going to see me writing with this pen next week because it is so empty that I just won't be writing with it next week. There was no way I'll have enough ink left. This is the offending lady. Uh, I mentioned that I liked how the chatoyance was lined up. And, you know, if you, you, you have to line up the threads right. But, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful olive finish. It's a shame that it runs out of ink after a, a line or two or three. In answer to a, sorry, in answer to a question I was asked, I had to turn around and grab a ruler out of the thing behind me. Uh, somebody asked how long it is, so capped. Uh, let's see here. I don't know, 110 millimeters. Or if you know, if you're into that kind of thing, four and a quarter inches. Posted. No, 128 millimeters, something like that. You know, without a calipers, it's hard to get that really exactly. And then, uh, if you're into that kind of thing, that other scale that certain countries can't seem to let go of for no real good reason, let's say five and an eighth inches. Dad, burn it. That's the system that sent us to the moon. Is it the best system? It sent us to the moon. Okay, dude. So this is a central pen lady. I'll put olive in parentheses in case I'm wondering later why it quit writing. And the ink is Parker Quink. Washable blue. Which I'm told is darker in mind than regular washable blue. And one thing I was thinking about, I don't have the box anymore. But uh, the bottle itself isn't actually labeled. So I don't know what that means, but there you go. One thing I've been noticing is that it is kind of scratchy, which can mean misaligned tines. Uh, my loop isn't here. I what, used to keep it here, but uh, I moved it to where I store my pens repair supplies because it's not something I use. Oh, heck, it's out. Okay. Let's just... See how this works. Sometimes this ends in tears. What am I supposed to focus on, hmm? Says the camera. Okay. So I don't know if you can make that out, but I really can't tell that it's misaligned through, my, through the loop. It does look like the tipping is a little bent. You know, when I looked at it under the loop, and uh, okay, so I'll give you this tip for free. Loops are great, but don't look at your nib through the loop unless there's a problem. 
because there's a lot of nibs that write just fine, and you look at them through the loop, and you're like, those tines are just a little misaligned, or ooh, they're, you know, the gap's too wide, or the gap's too narrow, or uh, ooh, I see a little bit of a barb there, and you know, you can end up doing damage to your pen because you see these things you wouldn't ordinarily see, and which don't affect your writing experience, and yet you feel compelled to fix them. So only look through your loop if there's a problem with the pen. See, I never noticed that the end of the nib has, uh, can you see it this way? Anyway, it looks a little bit like it was dropped and fixed. So, uh, fixed very well, but that may explain the scratchiness. So, I'm going to work on this pen. Um, it may be a while before you see it again, but I'm going to get it writing. It's a nice looking pen. It's a nice pen, but, uh, Definitely some issues. You know, I'm surprised it was able to write this much. My next pen is, is a much more refined lady. Although her chatoyance doesn't line up as well. But I love, I mean, this looks like fire. Especially in the right lighting. Yeah, rawr, fire. In this dark finish. I, it's just gorgeous. You know, I could probably use a little pen polishing, but... Uh, beautiful and the, the other one's nib I didn't show you but it's a Bach nib this has another one of those Esco nibs uh oh okay that I put down to a one-time thing not a ongoing problem because it started right up um, red this one is diamine ancient copper uh, kind of reminds me of Noodler's Antietam or maybe I should say Noodler's Antietam reminds me of this uh, the big advantage to Noodler's Antietam is in some pens and maybe you see a little sign of it by the fact that this was so dark to begin with in some pens this can be a very crusty ink not as bad as some of the diamine oranges but crusty um, Whereas the Noodler's Antietam doesn't have that problem. Of course, Noodler's Antietam has the other Noodler's problem where some of their inks just never dry and you're ooh, railroading and fixed right away. Whereas this pen, when it starts railroading, you're done for a while. But anyway, some of the Noodler's inks just take forever to dry. And if it's been in the pen for a while, this uh, a Noodler's Antietam is one of them. So this is Vanstrom's. It's been a busy couple of weeks because I don't think this pen would still be full of ink if it weren't. But uh, Svanstrom's. And I was asked about taking out the car the the uh, piston. I did. So I kind of gripped it here. There's some knurling there that I can grip, and I was able to. Or sorry. Uh, sorry, thinking of a different pen. There's a different pen. Is it laying here? One I worked on recently where I gripped the knurling. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, maybe I do see it. Oops. Just damaged some vintage package. Nope, that isn't it either. I'm looking at a Luxor, which should be filmed this sometime next week or two but anyway I, I i worked with a pen recently where i was able to the 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 piston had two sections in it and one of them was used to turn the piston into the pen oh it was my matador uh matador something it had red stripes you'll be seeing that one soon this one the svanstrom's i was able to grip on the threads and turn the piston out don't remember why I had to do that, but I did. Okay, put it on. I dabbed it on paper towel and it started right up. So I think that was just a hard start. S T R O M S Svenstroms Royal. So a Swedish pen, full of Parker Quink. washable blue which has kind of become my go-to for uh, 
you know, writing. <laughs> uh, doing my first impressions, I should say. You know, I was going to switch to another blue and kind of work my way through some blue inks for first impressions, but you know, I'm kind of leaning toward making it a thing. So I may have to use up some of my other blues in a different way. I'm trying to reduce the number of inks that I have. I have more ink than I want. I kind of I remember the days when my ink collection all fit in a shoebox with room to spare. Those days are long past. This is set for a few weeks, so I don't know if it'll start. So this really isn't a pen in use. Uh, this is more of a pen that was in use and sat, and now I'm using it again. But this is a Pen BBS 38. Ooh, did I say 388? I think I meant 355. But anyway, I put a Nema sign nib in it, a stub, um, 0.6 stub, and I haven't written with it for a few weeks. Oh, heck yeah. When was the last time I wrote with that pen? Because I waited to write with it intentionally. So it's been since November 13th that I last wrote with it. And it, as you saw, it started right up like a champ. So the ink in it is Roarer and Cleaner Alt Goldgrin. One of the things I always enjoyed with Nemesine nibs is they do have you know, stubs and all that, but they have some interesting sizes that maybe you don't find from other pen makers. And I'm sure they didn't make their own nibs. I'm sure these nibs are made by somebody, you know, Bach or Yovo or whomever, but... Still. And of course, Alt Gold Grin's kind of a fun color. My sixth pen is my Caveco Sport. Uh, hasn't seen a lot of use. I mean, I've used it this week, but not a lot. Ooh, actually, one thing I was kind of asked about the lady. Oh, let's turn him this way. The lady is slightly longer than the Caveco Sport. This one has a fine point nib on it, and the ink in it is Quizzy Menthol Green. And just to fit my pens on the page, because I've been writing kind of large, we'll squish this box a little. Okay, getting there. So this is another pen that's been sitting for a few weeks, because I just decided I've been using it too much. Uh, this is my Aurora 88 in the Giove finish, which looks nothing like Jupiter, but is absolutely gorgeous. You know, first it looks like confetti, but the more I study, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. Ooh, I didn't know how well it would do there. So this is an Aurora 88 with a broad nib, and the ink in it is Birmingham pens. Twilight. Not the sparkly vampire kind of twilight, but the, uh, see, see, I teach teenagers, so I know this stuff. Uh, but the Allegheny River Twilight, which was its original name. Oops. And you saw almost no twilight. Somebody for always forgets to pay attention to his preview screen. Yeah, so bound and determined I needed to be able to see it. 
and yet I don't use it as much as I should. Okay, so my uh, Pelican Stola ran out of ink, and uh, I was going to refill it, and then I had this thought, because I, ooh, I got to write something, and I'm not able to write. So I grabbed my uh, Waterman Hemisphere and started writing, and of course it's a very fine nib pen, and it worked. So I decided I'm going to use up my Bay State Blue, and just focus on using this as my daily writer pen for now. I'm going to have to come up with some other pen to be like my other ink. But I'm going to use Base State Blue as my daily writer ink at work. To like flip and run that bottle dry. I filled it up twice in the last two weeks. So maybe there's hope. After that's over, this pen is going to need some serious decontamination because uh, the nature of Bay State Blue. Uh, if you ever want to have some fun, mix Bay State Blue with almost any ink and see what kind of interesting sludge you get. Uh, Bay State Blue does not play well with other colors. On a happier note, although it's kind of a bright blue, it's still a blue, so you can get by with using it as a uh, business-like type of ink. I've just found uh, other blues that I prefer. Mainly because they don't come with all the baggage. So, there's my Noodler's Bay State Blue. And my last pen I was talked into buying by a viewer. Uh, this is a Aurora Duo card in a very nice green finish. I, uh, I don't know, there's something about this 1950s, 1960s kind of green I've always liked. Uh, I haven't quite found the color. You know, it's a brighter green, like maybe this menthol green, but still kind of pastel like this. Um... I feel like I used to have a crayon called Pea Green when I was a kid that was close to the color, but yeah, I just always, uh, well, you probably know I write science fiction kind of as a hobby and maybe someday to publish, but uh, I've always envisioned a sheriff's office that's very western looking, very small, kind of a wooden shack, really, because the people I write about aren't the rich Star Trek people, and uh, painted Pea Green. So, anyway, that's why this pen appealed to me. So it's the updated version. I'm going to have to do a video where I, after I get to know this pen, where I compare the new version to the old version. Because apparently Aurora did some modernizing. So this is Aurora Duo Cart. I believe they are all mediums. This ink is a um, Kyonooto. Uh, and I should not look, because I'd be tempted to buy. I don't know why I've been tempted to buy every one of their inks, but Kyono Oto, I mean, get the spelling right, you're a hiero. Whoops, I wrote an H instead of a U. You know, these inks don't play well in every single pen I have. Some pens, they are god-awful. But damn, when they work, they're just so nice and understated and evocative. And I'm scared that they'll have a new color out and I'll, have, I'll fall in ink lust and buy another bottle of ink I don't need. Because do I really need every color that they make? No! Why do I want it? I don't know, but... You know, that desire to acquire would be an interesting topic. I was watching a video this week. Uh, maybe I'll try and find it and add one more link to my video description. Because I know, I see I still need to fill in a, um, a link on my video description. Uh, but anyway, you know, one more link on my video description about why we always want to acquire. But anyway, this video was about how you could do much more good by helping 
the less fortunate with your money than by buying things for yourself. And yet at the same time, at what level do you are you sacrificing so much to help others that you're not really enjoying life and living your own life? So it was something worth thinking about. So I'll try to remember to find the link, but you know, it's a little past nine now. And I really want to go to bed, so I'm going to get this thing edited and edited, and I'm going to go to bed. So, um, happily, the conversation after this was filmed last night, so I don't have to film that yet. <laughs> so, uh, let's go to what I filmed last night. So, those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. I, uh... Well, a few repeats, what I'm trying to do, I always try to do this every holiday, you know, once a year, and at the end of the school year. I try to write down my pens, get them all empty, and then I can just start fresh with a new batch. So, next couple of pens and uses, you should see the, you know, narrowing of the list, except for the whole, you know, I'm planning to film a whole bunch of reviews, so expect to see a whole bunch of Parker Quink Blue coming up <laughs> as, as I uh, get videos filmed and, uh, pens in use so uh my first topic I, I have just i have a few things i listed and of course you can see all the links and everything in the video description i tried something new in evernote which is what i use to write i over my lights here okay speaking of lights, sorry this isn't in my outline but i'm going to add it so over my shoulder here the looking at my preview screen here okay yep over this shoulder i have um are called twinkle lights or shimmering lights they are uh, incandescent light bulbs that uh, every eighth one or every tenth one something like that has a little fuse so it blinks on and off and then the others just kind of stay lit but depending on how many of these uh, twinkly flashy ones are on and off at a time it increases or decreases the resistance in the circuit so the whole chain of lights gets brighter or dimmer and so i i I'm going to try to remember. I'll probably only remember when I get to editing because I still got to do the pen part and it's getting late at night. But anywho, I, uh, I'll put a link to how these lights work. But uh, something that's making me think over... Sorry, look at my preview again. Yeah, over this shoulder, kind of where my... Ah, th uh, horrible at this. Where my thumb is trying to trace and doing really badly. <laughs> There's like a U of lights. I... Uh, was given a couple years ago some strands of blue lights that are solar, uh, recharged by solar power. And I said, oh, thanks. And I put them in my basement and forgot about them. So I've been doing some house cleaning and decluttering and stuff. Well, classroom cleaning and decluttering too. And uh, ran across them and I thought, huh, let's just put them up in the living room window. So I, I kind of hung them, I draped them over the curtain rod and stuff. And uh, set the solar panel so it would light up, you know, be charged in the south-facing window, which is what that one is. And uh, looked pretty cool the first night. Hasn't lit since. I uh, don't think there's enough light there. Or, uh, you know, I have some solar-powered night lights I use in my bathroom. And, and I put the two uh, light panels, but they only light a single LED, you know, in the bathroom window during the day. And then I come home at night, put them in the lights and uh you now they provide light for most of the night by morning when i wake up unless it was a really bright sunny day the day before they are usually out but you know it works um yeah that one and i've got one in the east facing window uh, nothing after that first night so of course i was fascinated by those twinkle lights i've also had floating around because i bought several strands that year when i found that video i bought uh several more strands you know i bought this one i've got a strand i use at school for you know my electronics and stuff that i teach and then i have these two kind of well who knows why i just thought they were cool so i bought them but i'm kind of thinking about putting them in the living room windows here instead the only trouble is old house i mean probably it was put here in the 1930s but it was probably dragged in from out of the prairie god knows when so uh who knows when it was built so not a lot of outlets around the house so i'm trying to figure out how many extension cords i dare run so we'll see 
how uh, brave I feel about my house's electrical system. At least it's got a, other than the lack of outlets, it's got a decently newish electrical system. So you know, I'm not worried about burning out fuses or anything. It's just, it's old enough that they didn't put it, or maybe when they rewired it, they just didn't put in more outlets. Uh, who knows? <laughs> but, <coughs> excuse me. But I may actually have some holiday lights for once. Because I just thought, you know, these have been sitting there since who knows when. So, let's show them off. Um, second, so my second, oh, let me just type that into Evernote real quick. I'll edit this out. <clears throat> there. One twinkle light video added to my uh, links down below. And uh, you didn't have to wait for that thanks to the magic of video editing. All right, so my next topic, which was supposed to be my first one, uh, I'm experimenting a little bit with Evernote, you know, trying to format this stuff better. So we'll see how it turns out when I paste the video description in. And I'm not going to take the time to edit it again. But I decided with my links to use bullet points for each description and then the uh, link kind of as a sub thingy underneath you. I don't know how you do it on like a Windows machine, but on my Mac I just do shift enter. So it, it's still indented, but it doesn't have the bullet in front of it. So we'll see how it works out. If I hate it, I hate it and won't do it again. Uh, I kind of wish YouTube descriptions could do more formatting because there have been a few times that like... I'd like to underline that, or I'd like to italicize that, and I can't, so. But what limited formatting it does have is kind of nice, because you can put links and such in there, so I do appreciate that. So we'll just see how that works. I don't know that that's anything worth commenting on, because I'll be able to see it just as well as you. Um, so uh, my exciting thing, I, I've been thinking about... Um, Doing a Q&A is kind of a holiday special because I'm, you know, I, I guess I could do my top 10 pens of 2020, but I don't know, the whole top 10 thing is getting kind of boring. So uh, I thought I would do something different instead. So I thought I'd just do a Q&A. So what I did is I set up a Google form uh, so you can put your questions. Now, uh, you know, it doesn't mean I'm going to answer every question. How much money do you make a year? None of your business. Not even going to acknowledge that question exists. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put up a QA and a and I get final say on which questions I do. But I'm going to try and answer a number of them. Uh, so I, I put a link in the video description to a Google form. It's going to ask you for the question. That's a required field. And then there's an optional field for a nickname. So if, you know, if I want to say, well, Wally asks, what's your favorite kind of squirrel? And so then I can answer it and you know cite wally whereas maybe helga is terrified of you know being identified on the internet so helga can just post her question anonymously so anyway and like i said if there's you know trolley questions or questions i just not going to answer then they will not make it into the video so that's my answer to that so if you want to join into that feel free um i i didn't put a close date but at some point when i feel like i have enough questions i will close it and uh We'll do a Q&A video. So, you know, if you want to ask some topics outside pens, feel free. You know, if you want to ask what's it like living in North Dakota, why, what, what's wrong with you that you moved from Pennsylvania to North Dakota, witness protection program. Um, you know, feel free to just let me know in the com in the Q&A what you want to ask about. Like I said, if it's too personal or uh, just trolly, I won't answer it. Uh, on other topics, I recently did a video. In fact, you'll see several stars from that video appear in the pen part, which I still need to film. Hopefully I don't fall asleep before then. <laughs> um, from my, and I thought of this title after I filmed it because I would have loved to have used this title in the video. But uh, let me read it here so I don't say it wrong. My Chetoyant Czechoslovakian celluloid from Centropen video. So, yeah, I had a lot of fun looking at all the Chetoyant celluloid that Centropen made because they made some beautiful stuff. And again, shout out to Penultimate Dave because his video on Arco celluloid gave me the idea. So, kind of a fun vintage celluloid, just very pretty. Um, another exciting thing that I just learned this week. So, uh, there may be a little binge watching coming this weekend, although I got to work at the school all Saturday evening. But uh, at some point this weekend, maybe it'll be Sunday evening, 
I will be binge watching the first three episodes of The Expanse because The Expanse season five is out. I uh, was very sad to learn two things about The Expanse. One is they're going to discontinue the series after season six. Um, I think part of that is they want to go out on a high note and part of it, maybe the actors and actresses are ready to move on. Who, you know, who knows? Uh, one thing that disappointed me, one of the characters I like, uh, turns out to be played by an actor who's a little, <laughs> um, Cass Anvar, who, um, <laughs> anyway, he, he's, uh, one of the four main characters. He chose to, uh. I guess be a little sexual harassy and uh, not always to female fans over the age of 18. So he's out. And uh, yeah, so there goes a major character from the show. Although, you know, he's not the Holden or anything, but he's he's a pretty major character. So, and you know, what? what's sad to me is until I read that, I could have told you exactly what his name is as a character. But then after I read that, you know, now that I know that i just think of cass anvar the actor instead of the character he played and uh, i'm gonna have to go re read the books to uh, kind of as a palate cleanser or to bleach my brain of cass anvar because disappointing so you know it'll be uh interesting to see how they handle season six without him but i'm gonna guess he appears in season five a lot because season five was filmed before all of his stuff <laughs> but Anyway, I'm excited about this. Should be the one where uh, Marcos, the terrorist, bombards. Okay, I don't want to do too many so spoilers. We'll just say Marcos, the, the uh, terrorist, does terroristy things. So, uh, and we get to see Amos and get a little more of his background. See, I know all the other characters' names. I just can't remember who Cass Anvar played because the actor ruined the character for me. And like I said, now I got to reread the books to clean that out of my brain. Um, <clears throat> another one I'm waiting on that's apparently been released is Deutschland 89. It's a German series that follows my favorite East German spy. Um, 1989, of course, is the year the Berlin Wall fell. And I remember that. I was a uh, eighth grader, so I would have been 14 years old when that fell. And I remember sitting in the living room watching it fall. And, you know, the lead up to that, of course, is in my memory, too. You know, the protests in Poland, which is how it began. And, uh. You know, all of uh, Central Europe just kind of felt like dominoes. And, you know, it hadn't been too many years before that. And I'd been told in school how the Soviet Union and the Iron Curtain were all the enemy. And, whoop, <laughs> that's over with. Um, I had some old cold, cold warriors as teachers. Like, elderly, well, they, all my teachers in elementary school were ladies, except for the PE teacher. Elderly ladies who... Uh, Far too many of them saw. We're still in that Cold War mindset, even though the cracks were beginning to show by then. Uh, and then another exciting thing. Oh, I don't have one over here because I'm in my house. I don't need one. Uh, but North Dakota is now under a mask mandate. It's been under a mask mandate since, uh, a little, well, well before Thanksgiving. I didn't write the date down, but... Uh, Mask mandate. Uh, we were expecting a big spike in COVID cases thanks to Thanksgiving, but uh, didn't happen. And uh, it's just been going down. And, uh, you know, is it just the mask mandate? Is it the other restrictions? Who knows? Um, but, you know, you'd have to do a proper study on it to find out the exact cause. But, uh, you know, I've already had people tell me, has nothing to do with masks. Masks have nothing to do with COVID. But, uh, you know, I, I thought there would be a lot more opposition to masks here in North Dakota than there was. You know, you've got your crazies and extremists who just deny science. But uh, for the most part, people are just like, okay, well, we'll wear a mask for a while. Whatever. Um, and and I, I know a certain number of them are just like, I'm just wearing it because everybody else is wearing it. And nobody's standing up, so I guess I'll go along. But, hey! Cases are going down, can't argue. Uh, we were, uh, one of my links here, uh, we were the high, let me read it here. We were at one point the highest COVID-19 mortality rate in the world. Now raw numbers, no, it's, it's, a, it's a small rural state, but uh, 
yeah, we were the highest rate. But what's interesting is, after they mentioned that North Dakota just implemented a mask mandate, because it's an older article, uh, they quit talking about North Dakota, and they spend most of the article talking about South Dakota, where there is no mask mandate. Um, their governor and her office have actually put out stuff opposing mask mandates or saying that there's no science to back them. But she's kind of... Okay, I don't want to use that word. Kind of not as scientifically minded as I would like to see a leader of a state to be. Is that a nicer way of saying it than the word I was about to use? Sorry, I was a little distracted there. If you saw the jump cut, I uh, heard a crash in the kitchen. I went out to investigate and... Uh, I've got my trash sitting out to take out, but it's dark outside, so I just didn't want to. So I thought, well, I'll do it in the morning. And it tipped over, and there was some jars and things in it, so it scared me. But, anywho, I, uh, where was I? South Dakota. So anyway, uh, yeah, North Dakota is doing better than South Dakota now on that front. Although I, I believe... Although I don't have a link for this, so I may be wrong. I believe that the Midwest, is, the cases have been going down a little bit. Which, good, because it got really freaking high here for a while. Uh, it is annoying to be the mask police at school, especially when you have a population of students who don't like wearing them. And uh, while I was investigating trash, I took the chance to grab one. You know, this is proper mask wearing. But you see a lot of that. And then it starts migrating south. And then the next thing you know, it's down here. Or when they want to be real dumbasses, it's like here or here. And it's like, okay, how? what do I do with all this petty garbage? And, you know, it's the crowd I deal with because they're teenagers. And don't tell me you didn't do stupid things when you were a teenager that now you look back and you're like, oh my god, I really did that and I thought I was so cool. That's the stage of life that they're at right now. And I don't care if any of them heard me say that. Because it's true. Adult you is going to look back and say, Ooh, I was really stupid there and I thought I was cool. So, uh, yeah. We all have cringy things to look back to at from our teenage years. Uh, so anyway, I'm happy to see it's going down. I, I One of my links actually compares South Dakota to Vermont because... North Dakota's no longer exciting enough to compare to a state where it's sort of working. Um, and South Dakota and Vermont are not comparable in size, because Vermont's tiny. Uh, but uh, they are comparable in population and the fact that they're both very rural states. And yeah, one state has a lot less COVID-19 than the other, even though it's a much more densely populated state. I wonder why. And uh, both have GOP governors, which was another interesting piece. Uh, and then one last article I included is a little tragic. It kind of comes from this area, although South Dakota side, uh, a town called Mitchell, which is home to the Corn Palace, which, I'll be honest, I have driven past Mitchell a few times. I've never been through it. Apparently, when my parents come visit me, that's the exit they take to come visit me because they want to get off the interstate. So, okay, Mom and Dad, if you want, that's fine. I Actually, I, you know, I kind of get it because I hate driving on the interstate because it's so boring in most areas. But, uh, I don't know. I guess that's just not an area that really appeals to me, but maybe it's because I'm used to it. I kind of like, you know, when you get up around McLaughlin and head west from McLaughlin, that's pretty and, uh. You know, if you go north from McLaughlin, that's gorgeous, but... So, I guess I won't say anything. I've never been south of McLaughlin down to Mitchell or Mobridge and all those towns, so... But anyway, this article comes from uh, uh, Mitchell, South Dakota, and it starts talking about all these important people in their town that have died of COVID. And hey, we just had an important person in our town die of COVID. Um, and all the people that don't care including their mayor. You know, big debate over, are we going to do a mask mandate or not? And all these anti-mask people are showing up without masks to city hall meeting and bleeding nothing. Meanwhile, the doctors are just going, oh my god. I've got to fill out what, what the one doctor's like, 19 death certificates tonight. 
uh, helicopters constantly taking patients out of Mitchell to elsewhere because Mitchell can't handle them all. Uh, you know, and it's rural enough state that they have to travel a long ways, which is why they're using a helicopter. And yeah, that can be, I can see why that's frustrating. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I'm a teacher. So I know the frustration of here's the right thing to do to keep yourself safe, or in my case, to learn, but you won't do it. And you'll deny that it's even effective. And your uneducated opinion, backed by no research, no, no nothing, is just as valid as my years of experience, my education, and a whole field of people, of experts who say, this is what works. Don't believe it. So, yeah, I... Uh, I can't even imagine being in the medical field right now. It, you know, it's frustrating enough being in the teaching field where, okay, well, if you don't listen to me, I guess you're not going to get as good an education as you could have, which, you know, may limit your life choices, and you'll probably end up blaming the school for not educating you. But uh, whereas the doctors are looking at, oh, yeah, you make these bad choices, you're going to die. Or cause other people to die while you only get sick because... You know, you have the right characteristics, but this other person you infected because your stupid choice died. So, yeah, I, I don't know where to go with that. That's just frustrating. So, uh, anyway, but like I said, the good news is North Dakota has a mask mandate. And, you know, anecdotally, not, not numerically, I will say I'm seeing a lot more of these in the stores. Um, there's still a few losers who won't wear one, but... You know, and in school, we do our best. We insist on them wearing them, but uh, could use some teeth to it because that. Could you wear your mask? I am. Over your face. <laughs> that gets old. Or the, could you, don't forget your mask. Okay. So, yeah, I get tired of that <laughs> fun fact i bought this mask this is one of the first masks i bought because i learned uh, one of my students was going to be uh quarantined at the beginning of the school year thanks to covid19 and it kind of looks well it looks better on a face only this student and the people who know this student know why i thought so kind of looks like that student because that student wore glasses very similar to this so I have to wear squirrel masks, of course, because it's me. And I've been wearing them since before they were required while I was teaching at school, so that's been fun. So, yeah, I'm not asking you to do anything I don't do myself, damn it. Uh, our schools are required, you know, we do have sports going on, but we are now required all fans must wear masks. No entry without masks. Schools that don't enforce that can get fined. If uh, <clears throat> the fans from your school, like say I'm, we're playing Belfield as a, just a wild example, the fans from my school aren't wearing masks up in Belfield, uh, the school can get in trouble. Uh, we could lose games and stuff just over not wearing masks. So, yeah, there are some teeth with it as far as schools are concerned. But meanwhile, my local sheriff says, <laughs> I'm not going to enforce the mask mandate. And, okay, if that's your opinion, I think it's ignorant and uneducated, but you have the right to be ignorant and uneducated. But, to post that on the official Sheriff's Department Facebook page, yeah, I got a problem with that. Now you post it on your personal ones, so what? I'll judge you, but that's your business, not mine. But putting it on the Department Facebook page, big problem there. In fact, I should put a link to that, too, just to... Actually, probably I shouldn't. No, I won't. But I want to. Because <laughs> I'd love to have some people go in and say, Dumbass! But, anyway. So, that's what's going on with COVID-19. But, again, going back to the happy stuff. Um, the first three episodes of The Expanse Season 5 are out. Deutschland 89 will soon be out. And, uh... You know, I'm looking at doing a Q&A video, so load me up with questions. So, I want to thank you for watching.
We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.